Cheating, a concept that plagues many professional environments, including schools. Cheating is using someone else's work or illegitimately gaining answers to work such as tests. There are many different influences that create an atmosphere for cheating. Some of these will be portrayed for you throughout the duration of this video. B plus. A D plus? Man, that test was so hard. I can't believe how anyone could get higher than a C. It's easy when you have the right resources. You can get the grade you want if you aren't scared to do it. Harvard, here I come. There are many pressures to cheat that weigh on students. A large amount, about 92%, cheat because of the pressure to get good grades. They think that they need to do whatever they can to get into the college they want, because otherwise they might not have a good future. There, as you just saw, is also peer pressure to cheat. The student who receives a low grade is made to feel bad about him or herself, and has the inclination to begin to cheat to fit in. But how do these students cheat? In this generation, it's all about the technology. iPods, cell phones, smartphones, and graphing calculators are all common devices used in cheating. In this instance, the student is using the camera on their phone to take a picture of the test and then send it to another student. Now, as the teacher, what can you do? The teacher should definitely pay attention to the students more while they are taking the test. There should be a rule of no electronics out during the test, and maybe even a rule to keep their hands above the desk the whole time. This way it's much easier for the teacher to spot the cheaters. Teachers should also try and keep up with the new advances in technologies and ways to cheat. Don't, don't go over your test until I say. I want to remind you that all electronics are not allowed during the test. That means no cell phones or iPods. Also, try to keep your hands above the desk and your eyes on your own paper or else I might think you're cheating. And if I catch you cheating, it's an automatic F. Okay, so good luck. Give me I said no electronics during the test. I'm going to have to take that from you. I'm sorry. I hate to do this. This is the proper way to handle cheating. The teacher reminded the students of her rules of taking a test so that they are fully aware of the consequences of their actions. The teacher also walked around the classroom during the test and was very active in looking for students that might be cheating. Finally, after the teacher saw a student cheating, she did not turn a blind eye, but went through with what she said she would do. To further help prevent cheating, in a normal class, she could have given a day to talk about academic integrity and how cheating won't help in the long run. Hey, what are you guys up to? Oh, I'm just helping Sammy study for our next test. It's very much appreciated. Wait, you mean like, cheating? I like to think of it more as using the resources around us to the best of our abilities. Are you afraid of getting caught? Come on, we won't get caught. Unless someone tells on us. There's nothing wrong with it, honestly. Almost everyone does it. Do you want to learn or what? No, I, no, it's okay. I don't think I could live with that on my conscious. I think that it will help me in the long run to know this information, and I'll feel better about actually earning my grade. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. It becomes easier to avoid these pressures by recognizing that you have a need to earn your own grade and do your own work. There is a sense of accomplishment when you do well on a test or a paper that you worked hard on. You don't get that feeling when you cheat. Students also need to realize that everything they are being taught is to help them in the real world. So by cheating and never learning the subject, they are just further hindering their performance in the future. <laughs> 